Previously on the Adventure Zone. You're getting kind of close to the finish line. Oh, that's a one. <laughs> oh, you see, Geralt, Geralt talks a big game. Yeah. <laughs> Geralt's pulled under the tires of the car. Thank you for believing. <laughs> a bright red beam cuts a path through the top of the shark tank. You hear Marvy yell, Damn, you guys! Uh, you, you bring the axe down on him, and then he falls to the ground dead. And then his bubble deploys, and he just very slowly... <laughs> you just, you just, you're like... A, I'm going to cast Enlarge on the motorcycle. Okay. It is going very fast now. I'm going to hit that red, big, red-ass button because I think it's going to give us nitro-injected funny fuel. Can our heroes reach out and take a bite of that sweet, checkered flag? It's the final lap of the Adventure Zone! The two big chrome ram's horns on the front of this of, of Hurley's muscle car battle wagon sort of rotate 90 degrees uh, and are now like sticking out directly away from the car, almost like uh, two big curly wings uh, off, off the side of the car. And uh, they start to rattle and shake. Um, and Magnus, from where you're standing on top of the car, you can hear uh, the, the big row of these... Uh, big tailpipes on the back of the car, those are also starting to shake. Um, and suddenly, a, a deafening blast of blue flame just shoots out of the, the tailpipes and those two ram's horns simultaneously, uh, basically just turning the entire battle wagon into this great fiery blue arrow uh, that suddenly gains a pretty tremendous amount of speed. Uh, Magnus, like the G-force of you being like pushed backwards. If you were not strapped in to those safety rails on top of the car, you would be just toast right now because uh, this thing's kicking up a lot of fire. Uh, and uh, Taco, from where you are, this I imagine this is probably a pretty terrifying sight. It's like somebody's just shot a car missile in, in your direction. Um, and it gives you a pretty, pretty tremendous boost of speed. And uh, uh, it lasts for about 10 seconds before the tanks run dry. Uh, but that is all the time that Hurley needed to position herself basically neck and neck with, with Sloane's uh, sleek uh, floating canoe with these, these two wings coming off of it. That's her battle wagon. And Taco, you're actually pretty much neck and neck with them too in your great big motorcycle. Hell yeah. Uh, so the, the, <laughs> Easy rider, baby. And the three of you are 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 uh, nearing the finish line. You can uh, you can see it uh, a few hundred meters in the distance. You see these two big black pylons at the end of the of the racetrack. Uh, that and what's the press kind of situation and paparazzi at the finish? There's line? actually a lot of activity going on around these two big black pylons. Um, the only sort of familiar sight you see are the Gold Cliff Militia battle wagons that you mm-hmm. saw. Uh, when you first rolled up into town and shit was going south of that bank, um, you, you you see a few of those, um, and you see uh, you see a bunch of people standing around, uh, uh, and you you can make them out better and better because you're getting closer to them very very quickly. And then don't forget that finish line. Uh, you got that finish line, and then you got a um, not a lot of distance until the cliff. Um, you're also pretty that close. That seems poorly planned to me. Well, it's like a game of chicken. <laughs> You know, it's like uh, oh, I see. Yeah, uh, you're you're also getting you're you're pretty close to Gold Cliff itself because this is basically on the outskirts of the of the city. Um, you can hear Hurley and Sloan under their masks. You can hear them just like straight up laughing, like they are having a very very good time in this race. <laughs> well, good for them. Um, and they're sort of they're trading paint a little bit. I'm just gonna fix this for everybody. Nobody needs to worry. Okay. Real quick, so time out. Just like OOC, me asking Justin and Dad this question. I, Griffin, too, I guess, if you want to chime in, you can be a part of the show. 
aside from beat Sloan to stop her from using whatever the sash was and she's bad. The was guy there... sash. What? The guy sash. sash. Yes. The sash that gives you power over all nature. W- were we ever told, like, this is why you have to beat her or anything? Is it just like, if we win the race? I thought the goal was to keep Sloan from winning the race. Not necessarily that we had to win. Yeah, Hurley suggested during your uh, training montage that just like proving to Sloan that she could be beaten, that her the power that this sash has given her is is fallible in some way, would be enough to convince her to get rid of it. Okay, so we're going to save her soul. Kind of, well, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we good? Yeah, go uh, for it, Taco. The, okay. Uh, the problem with that plan, though, is that she's actually pulling ahead of you guys a little bit. She she is she is it's unclear what she's doing uh, to to get this extra boost of speed, but she's starting to inch ahead of you guys. Um, it, is she within jumping distance? Just out of curiosity, uh, she is within jumping distance. Yeah, uh, isn't everything within your jumping distance, Trav? Well, listen, Taco, talk first. So, Justin, do uh, yeah. what, do what you want. Okay, uh, I uh, put away my wand. I put away my umberstaff. I throw the emergency brake on the bike, and just as I do that, I pull out the wand of switcheroo, and I point it at Sloan. Holy shit, you remembered. And fire it. Okay. You <laughs> you fire the wand of switcheroo. Is there any sort of resistance on the wand of switcheroo? Uh, I think they get a... A D, uh, constitution of 17. Okay. I rolled a two. I don't know what kind of constitution I would add to that, but that's not going to do it. Okay. (laughs) Suddenly, Taco, you are in this winged canoe uh, that is floating off the ground. Uh, And uh, she is on this motorcycle, and she she starts to lose her balance a little bit uh, and and starts to actually drop to the back of the pack. Um, And then, again, the break. Oh, and the brake. brake. Oh, yeah. And the... the Yeah, I didn't the, want her catching up. The so. motorcycle's emergency brake it was on. Uh, so so that disrupted her uh, even more. And she is... Uh, yeah, she, she takes a real... She takes a tumble. She also takes a real hard look at her life, her decisions. Yeah, and thinks about what got her to that place. Uh, and that was enough. You, on this sleek uh, uh, battle wagon... Uh, are are fired through the air like an arrow. I jump onto the I jump onto the canoe. I want to win too. <laughs> okay, you also jump onto the canoe. I and ca- I floor it. I cast gust the of- vehicle because I want to beat him. I cast I use the uh, I cast gust of wind with my <laughs> to blow him back onto his. So only I win. <laughs> okay, just as you see him start to move forward, do you use your do you use your magic fan to do yeah, so? I yeah. use my magic fan you to just use bust gust of wind. out all those. I items. shoot the harpoon into the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> I use my last level three spell slot to cast fireball on the harpoon to melt it so he can't <laughs> attach to it. I, I shake my canoe. fist. <laughs> I ram the canoe. Okay, and the two of you, the, the two wagons are now just trading blows in a jovial <laughs> manner. <laughs> There's nothing jovial about this. How about if I remind us all that we're all together in this remind- by yelling out, we're a team. No way. So let me win. Okay, uh, so I cross the finish line while they're talking about it. Woo, somebody give me some milk to uh, drink like in the shows. Okay, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, Taco, you cross the finish line. In, in this, uh, this battle wagon, as you do, uh, like a metric ton of confetti comes shooting out of the, the top of those two pylons. And, Magnus yells, brakes! Uh, and the, uh, oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I, I break. Um, you can't really find the brake in this battle wagon. You're not really a cut. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you, you find a lever quickly uh, and, and yank on it and come to a, a, a stop before you go off the edge. The, the horns from the pylons actually play like a little jovial victory song. And the, the crowd around you is, is roaring with applause. Um, and uh, yeah, you see, you're really close to those wagons now, those, those uh, militia battle wagons. You see Captain Bane there, and he's applauding. He looks actually like really very genuinely proud. Um, uh, I don't know how he knows your identities under those masks, but he does. And he gives you a wink. Shh, he says, I'll never tell. It's the name tags. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and uh, yeah, you have won the battle wagon race, and and uh, we solved the battle wagon puzzle. You did, and Merle and uh, uh, Magnus and Hurley, you guys came in second. Congratulations, um, I guess. A smaller, a, a smaller spout of confetti well, comes you know, out for you guys. It, we were all on the same team, so as soon as one of us crossed, I feel like we all won. It's not really based on the vehicle. If you look in the battle wagon rule book, which I have right here, um, and as you're celebrating, uh, you almost don't notice as uh, Sloane uh, uh, appears in the distance. You see like a trail of dust that she's kicking up and the roar of, of this giant motorcycle. And she doesn't look okay. She's actually, she's actually like shuddering a, a, a little bit. Um, and uh, she's, she's holding her chest. And uh, you actually see these giant blue streaks of lightning start to sort of shoot off of her body. And as those lightning bolts hit the ground, these giant vines like really quickly, violently, shoot out of the ground and uh that calamity is getting closer and closer to you and suddenly the ground beneath you is starting to shake and some smaller pieces of the cliff near the edge are breaking off and falling to their their bouldery death uh oh, her motorcycle runs right through the crowd and you hear hurley yell slow no uh but she goes flying off the edge of the cliff Sloan does yeah on the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. There's suddenly, though, a blast of wind that comes up from the edge of the cliff, knocking back the few uh, people who looked over the edge to sort of witness uh, her demise. Um, And as those people are... Can can I just jump in and say, those people are sick. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, uh, As they're blown back, the sky around you, like somebody just flipped a switch, just turns pitch black. And... A giant tornado, like a mile wide, is just a few dozen feet away from the cliff, uh, from the cliff's edge, and away from Gold Cliff, the city itself. And surrounding it, uh, surrounding that tornado, you see thousands and thousands of ravens. I turn to Hurley. Uh, so how is? Uh, let me do my voice. Ahem. So uh, how's the whole beating her, and she'll give us this ash thing going? <laughs> she looks devastated. She looks really, really. She she actually just took off her mask, and as she did, as she as she took off her Rams mask, uh, and sort of tucked it away uh, in her sack, you you hear the crowd around you gasp as she does so. I take off my mask. I've been Magnus the whole time. Uh, there's not as big of a gasp. Like you aren't like a, a <laughs> you aren't a lieutenant in the militia in this town. Uh-huh. Um, Fair, but people are just like you. Hear some chatter, like oh yeah, oh well, yeah. <laughs> and I take my mask off and say. And I'm Bruce Wayne. Okay. They all, uh, you hear a, oh, okay, Mr. Wayne. Cool. I'm actually a mongoose. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs> she climbs into the driver's seat and straps herself in. Whoa. And she leans out the window and says, I've asked you boys for too much already. I can't, I can't ask you to risk your lives again, but... Magnus hops onto the car. And she... I leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she looks up at you, Magnus, and smiles and says, we got to try and save her, right? Oh, no, I left my wallet. Sorry. Uh, that was confusing. Oh, but yes, 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 we will. And I, I'll I walk over and say, no adventure would be complete without Weasel Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Weasel Man. She's, she's like laugh crying now. Like you, you're, you're cheering her up. She's like, Thank you, Weasel Man. Uh, and then the three of you are suddenly just uncomfortably looking at Merle as he doesn't get into the car. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I'll get in the car. I'll fix some shit with the big wrench. Okay, you uh, you clang around on the on the body of the car with the uh, with the wrench. It had some pretty gnarly damage to it. The uh, <laughs> I just changed one of the tires. Yeah, you changed one of the tires. You pry the Shark Tank's uh, uh, harpoon out of the, the back of the wagon, and the hole that it created just sort of closes up. So yeah, the battle wagon is, is uh, more or less good as new. Um, and uh, you guys assume your, your position's on top. Magnus, are you staying on top of the car? Yeah. Okay, God bless you. Uh, she throws the car in reverse, uh, oh, get, real quick before we go. Yeah, 
uh, maybe a new harness for Taco. We don't have one. We, we okay, I, let's go. We only have the ones we've got. <laughs> Wait a okay, minute, cool. I'm not even. I'm not even driving. Mm, I pass. Uh, I Taco, take no, my harness. No, don't worry about it. Alfred made me some mongoose wings. <laughs> I just extend them at any point. It's no problem. Uh, oh, cool. She's. Are, are you sure you know what a mongoose is? She's like. She's like what? laugh crying again. You guys are. You guys are really, really lifting her spirits. <laughs> yeah, like that's her intent. Uh, she throws the car in reverse and backs up quickly uh, a good a good uh, couple hundred feet and does that thing that people do in cars where it's really cool where they have like the brake on and they run the accelerator at the same time. It makes it make real loud noises and the tires are squealing. Mm-hmm. And then she releases the brake and the car flies forward. Uh, and you hear Captain Bane yell like, what the hell are you doing? As you go flying past the crowd <laughs> and you are free falling. The car has flown off of the edge of the cliff. Um, and Hurley is yelling, but you can't tell if it's out of fear or if she's just like psyched because of how sick this stunt is. Uh, and uh, you're falling down, but you got a pretty good horizontal velocity too as you enter into the edge of the tornado. And as you are sort of caught up in this tornado, you feel yourself being lifted and spun around pretty violently. Um, And you can actually see into the tornado now. You can sort of see into the heart of it. And you see a pretty horrific sight inside. You see this, uh, this giant pillar, like 10 stories tall, made out of hundreds of these thick vines. Um, And at the top of, of this pillar, these vines form sort of a, a natural platform at their crest. And, and on that platform, you can barely make out Sloan, who is um, semi encased in these vines. Basically her legs are sort of absorbed in this giant pillar of vines and her mask is off and uh, her, her, her skin is a mottled gray um, and her eyes are just completely glossed over. She has just been, she has just been completely taken over by, by the power of, of this sash. Wow, I just thank God it wasn't Elmira Gulch on a bicycle, because that would have been really scary. Now who's now who and what is that? The things that you said? From Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. That's Inside the tornado. Cut. Come on, get an education. Read a book. I guess the wiz- if I had read The Wizard of Oz, maybe? Or seen the movie? I've only seen Return to Oz. Oh, well, okay. It was re- then imagine TikTok. Imagine TikTok. It was <laughs> really confusing for <laughs> My me. My only... Oz reference point too. Imagine TikTok or nothing. I have nothing else. <laughs> was, he's on down. He's on yeah, down the no, road. Okay, that's the whiz. <laughs> oh right. right. Uh, so, th- so what is our car doing at this? It's point? It's in this tornado, and it's just Hell kind of yes. spinning around. Um, you're just sort of going around and around and around and around this big giant column of vines, um, and you're you're spinning around it. And Hurley's still just screaming, but now it's like definitely a like completely psyched scream. And it's a little irritating. Yeah, Maybe a little bit. My nerves too. Yeah, yeah, we get it. We've all been in tornadoes. Uh, she yells out, "We got to get over there. We got to get to the pillar." Okay, you're driving. I can't. It's yeah. in the air. What do you want? I'm gonna get. There's not a sky road. She yells. What do you want me to do? I don't know. I didn't think this through. I just drove off the cliff. Could we harpoon it? What? If we need to get somewhere in a hurry and we can't be bound by roads, there's only (laughs) one place we can turn. Uh, She actually yells, Magnus, that's a great idea. Oh, harpoon it. Yeah, that's good, too. Uh, Taco, you're in the gunner compartment, um, so you're the the one who could take a shot at this thing. Okay. Um, You want to roll, I guess, make a ranged attack roll on the the pillar of vines? Uh, Sure, yeah. Um, it's not, ah, uh, I'll put this charitably. It's not my strong suit. Making range attacks. Oh, 18. Maybe it is your strong suit. Not too much. That'll do it. The, uh, the harpoon, uh, blasts out of the, uh, blasts out of the, the cannon, uh, that you have mounted on top of Hurley's battle wagon and a, uh, big thick rope comes out tied to it, uh, comes out after it. Uh, and you gave it the, the exact proper amount of lead time, which is pretty impressive considering you were encircling yeah. your target uh, from a tornado. <laughs> um, pretty sweet. But you see the harpoon sort of dig its way in 
uh, to the to this vine beanstalk uh, close to the top of the platform. Uh, and the car is suddenly sort of uh, jostled as the rope is pulled taut. And now uh, every time you encircle this this central platform of vines, you're getting a little bit closer to it and a little bit closer to it. Like tetherball. Kind of like tetherball, yeah. Uh, and you're getting closer to it and closer to it and another lap around and now you're very, 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 very close to it. Suddenly your wagon just kind of crashes uh, onto the side of it and is bound to it by this rope uh, near the top. Um, it sort of landed on its wheels on the side of the wagon um so merle you're actually kind of uh pressed up against the door and through the window behind you you just see a a gooey death waiting for you below um and the left side of the car is sort of facing up uh towards the the top of the platform and you can almost see it like you're right up almost flush against it i want to climb up to the platform yeah you can actually do that pretty easily you by the way magnus had a pretty bad time during that whole i was hooked in you were hooked in but Damn, son. Like, they don't, they don't like, hook astronauts onto the sides of spaceships when they blast them off. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. But, yeah, fortunately, you actually have a pretty easy time climbing up on top of the platform. Um, and you can see a, a, uh, a completely enthralled Sloan um, encased in vines. All right. I uh, clamber. I clamber out of the car. Is there a Are you? Do you have a proficiency in clambering? I have a clamber proficiency of 22. Uh, yeah, there, I can't actually think of what the check would be, which usually means that you probably don't have to do a check. In fact, Hurley, uh, you, you were all snapped in your seatbelt, so you're not in like danger of falling out of the car. Hurley actually helps you out through her window. Um, I don't need no help. Well, she helps you anyway, um, cause that's the kind of person she is. Um, and talking, you can actually get out pretty easily too, because the, the gunner compartment has a big hole in the roof. Um, oh, great. Um, so, yeah, all of you are standing on this platform, and you see Sloane uh, in, encased in these vines, and she is – she looks she looks bad. It is, it is very reminiscent uh, – obviously, she's not on fire or anything, but it is very reminiscent of when Gundren Rockseeker was completely taken over by that gauntlet and just lost control. We call that the Zool effect. Yeah, yeah she is. Mm-hmm. I look at Hurley. Hurley, what, what, what do we do? You know her. I don't. I don't know her like this. She, she, she looks really upset. Maybe I never. Maybe I never really knew her. I cast zone of truth. <laughs> zone of truth has been cast, my friend. Okay, on what? I, it's a. It's all of us. It's a big old radius of us all. So everybody has to tell the truth. If they fail a to wisdom saving throw. Yeah, okay. All right. Wisdom. I rolled a 12. Okay, you're telling the truth. Wow. Curly rolled a 17. I did not beat it. Well, I got a 20. Okay. okay. Sloan got a 14. Okay, so here's the second part of my plan. Sloan? How do we free you from the sash's possession? You cannot free your friend. She says, this, by the way, was not her normal voice, if you recall. <laughs> there is no power greater than the power I possess now. I am absolute. What about the power of love? <laughs> what about Jesus? <laughs> What about Jesus? Where is that guy? <laughs> we haven't seen him in a, in a dog's we age. We could use some help right now. Uh, yeah. I need all three of you to make reflex saving throws or dexterity saving throws. I rolled a 15. Well, a 13 plus 2. Uh, 10. Uh, 8. Uh, all, Wait. All v- with a zero modifier. Okay. <laughs> uh she points her finger, and from her arm, this big, sickly green vine extends, uh, and it's covered in even sicklier green thorns uh, that she just rakes across the three of you and knocks you on your butts. Uh, and all three of you take nine points of vine Oops, damage. So um uh, Hurley very narrowly avoids it using her monk monk-like agility. 
And with that, uh, why don't we get into initiative? I roll. I got a sixteen. Nineteen for me. Eighteen. Sorry, twenty-two for me. Damn, not good for a godlike plant deity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, in fiction, that roll doesn't make any sense at all. Ooh, she did not do very good either. Uh, with the 22, Taco, you go first. Uh, as she uh, retracts that vine that she just whipped the three of you with, uh, and it, it pulls back into her body, uh, what you could see of her body, like her torso and arms and head, are now completely enveloped in even more vines. And uh, from her position in the center of this platform, extends uh, just basically a much, much larger... Uh, torso and two really scary looking arms and head uh, completely made out of vines. Um, this thing is about t- 20 feet tall uh, and it is fucking terrifying. And it is your turn. What are we on exactly? Just so I'm You're like, on a platform. A You're on a platform made out of vines. Don't worry about the consistency okay. of it. It's a solid, solid platform. Okay. You know how sometimes there's like a boss fight in a video game and you're like just standing on a bunch of vines for some reason? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, this is, could be this could be considered one of those boss fights. And Griffin, is this also one of those boss fights where like you're supposed to lose and then you all wake up and it's like, well, we'll get him next time. Uh, there's like, only one way to find out. Screen. You're saying is this a dream? Or have you been inside of Bart's nightmare this entire time? Bart's Bart's know, night Bart's we? nightmare was known for its uh, fail state boss battles. <laughs> Free action to talk to uh, Hurley. Okay. Hey, li- listen, we're gonna have to blast the hell out of this thing. You understand that, right? Like no hard Can feelings. Can you blast around her? We tried to do it your way. It didn't work. Hey, I don't Does know. anybody have any like weed be gone or anything? I am weed be gone. That wasn't that, a, that, that was not as menacing sense. as you thought it was going to sound. Yeah, I, I thought right, it was pretty it? cool. I am weed be gone. Yeah, there we go. And that still didn't still didn't work, it, does it? No, it was, it was, it was like okay. It. Okay, you saw us use all kinds of powers, yeah. right? Did you happen to see us rest after that? <laughs> no. Okay, so we're in limited options territory, my dude. Um. I cast a uh, fireball on whatever part of the plant is furthest from Sloan, <laughs> I suppose, where the Sloan shaped object would be. Uh, that would probably be the head of the thing. Um, Cause it's, it's way Sweet. high up and Sloan was sort of inside of the platform partially. Sweet. Oh, I make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Yep. I just realized you guys are kind of fighting like a wacky inflatable tube person, That's okay. but it's made out of vines. And it looks scary. It's a scary inflatable tube, man. Uh, a very dramatic inflatable 13, tube. 13. Not going to do it. Nope. You have set the head of this thing ablaze. 6, 13, 16, 20, 23, 28, 29. Fuck me. Wow. 33. 33. Okay, and it's fire damage, uh, which plants don't love. Uh, so go ahead and double that. Uh, 66, and as I fire, I scream in one of my patented cool lines, That was my last spell! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, yeah, the head of this thing just disappears. As you burn it up, um, and and, uh, little gray, ashy chunks uh, get swirled up and caught in the tornado and just kind of fly, fly away as this thing's head just disappears. And sort of the areas around its neck... Uh, and shoulders are still on fire, uh, so they'll take some damage from that as well on their turn. That was is that the hardest hit of the show so far? It's got to be, right? Yeah, it has to be. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next in the order with 18 is Merle. I'm casting Prayer of Healing on the four of us. Oh my, that's a good spell. What's it do? Up to six creatures of my choice... Uh, regain hit points equal to 2d8 plus my spell casting ability. That's a fucking heal and a half. Nice. Which and is I needed three. that real bad. Yeah, so- this is... All right, here we go. Seven. Okay, so it's I- two... I'm sorry? 
Oh, we don't each roll. Okay, sorry. That's no, I give you 14 plus... No, no, you have to roll the d8 twice. Oh, okay. And... Seven and four, so that's 11, plus three is 14. Okay. Uh, I mean, nice. I cast Prayer of a Healing. Oh, Extreme Teen Bible! Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you hear the faint sound of a chorus of angels... Uh, as the four of you are encircled in a, a brilliant white light and you recover 14 hit points. Harley is actually a little worse aware. She took a little bit of damage in the crash uh, and she, she stands up and says, thanks, guys. Uh, You're welcome. Next in the order of 16 is Magnus. Um, can I see Sloane or is she like covered by vines? She's gone. Yeah, you can't see her. Okay. So there's just like a pillar of vines, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I want to run up to it. Okay. Um, and I guess I want to hack at it. Okay. What I what I want to do is try to like pull it open to see if I can see Sloane inside. Uh, pulling it open would be kind of dangerous because these vines are surrounded in 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 thorns um, that are like the size of your forearm. Um, mm-hmm. So that might be kind of tricky. You could try it, but you would. Uh, I would make you do probably slide a hand to avoid taking damage from that. Even with Fletcher's Mitt and Phantom Fist? Well, that means nothing, but yes. <laughs> I've got gloves on, Griffin. Yeah. Is it possible that this thing is so big it's become tree-like? No. Huh? Okay. I do want to try to pull it open, because if we can save Sloan, the fact that we couldn't save uh, Gundren has really been eating at me over the last two seasons. Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can pull. Run it on up and uh, uh, make a sleight of hand check. I'll say you have to beat a 15 to okay, get around these. Well, I, I rolled a 17. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. So you you find two good handholds uh, where you can sort of get in there without getting poked at, uh, and now make a strength check. 19 plus seven 26. Don't you still have the Red Bull? Yeah, but I'm good with a 26. Yeah, 26 is good. Well, actually, I roll critical on 19 and 20, so technically I got a critical on my okay. strength. Yeah, check. you like it's like you're throwing open like a shitty saloon door. You just sort of throw these vines out to the left and right. And, uh, yeah, you do actually see uh, Sloane in the middle of them. Um, she's got uh, – it's, it's, it was like a little bit hollowed out inside it was like a kind of like a little viney clubhouse uh that she was she was in um but you see again her torso and and just sort of sticking out from the top of this platform uh and she kind of hisses at you uh violently as as you part the curtain into her little inner sanctum i want to go into the inner sanctum and run up to her and punch her punch who i want to punch sloan Cool, okay. I thought you went in to save her, but all right. I want to knock her unconscious. Okay. Okay. Remember, zone of truth is still in effect. I th- so he definitely does want to punch her. <laughs> I definitely want to punch her. <laughs> he, de- he does want to do that. Uh, 16 plus 7, 23. Yeah, that's a hit. Um, now, let me ask you this. Okay. I've got this thing called disarming strike. No, you can't punch, somebody's, you to make can't her- punch somebody's belt off. <laughs> uh, okay, well then I just want to punch her and see, and I want to push her uh, out of these she vines. Can't, no, she's I she's it, 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 her legs are gone. Her legs like inside of this giant. Okay, well column. I just want to punch her in the head. Okay, then. you punch her head. That's a four plus two. I do six points of damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you clock her, and uh, she sort of rears back from your punch and looks up at you. And spits out a little bit of green blood, and then uh, you hear her go. <laughs> and I laugh too. <laughs> we are having a good time. Uh, are you done? Yeah. Taco calls up. Hey, you guys laughing in there? Uh, yeah, come on in. Don't leave me out. Uh, Love a good chuckle. It's actually Sloane's turn, and um, you're actually unable to join them. Because the vines slam shut Shit. behind uh, uh, Magnus. And Magnus, you're now sort of in pitch black. And you still hear that mm-hmm. uh, sort of haunting laughter. Um, and you can't tell what is coming at you. 
but you feel like you're being electrocuted and stabbed at the same time. I'm on board with uh, that. That's a 24. Like, that does hit. Versus AC. Uh, but I, I'm going to use parry, yeah. which is uh, when another creature damages you with a melee attack, you can use your damage and expend... You can use your reaction and expend one superior die to reduce the damage by the number you roll on your superiority die plus your dex modifier. Okay, go ahead and roll that. Um, and it's a five plus two, so okay. seven. Reduce it by seven. Uh, so you only take twenty six points of damage. Ooh, really glad that Merle healed me, and glad I decreased it. I'm down to eight points of life. Yeah, you just get fucking shredded. You just hear you just hear Magnus go ah from inside of the torso of this giant vine monster, uh, which uh, also, as those vines shut behind Magnus, uh, this thing's head completely regrows. And uh, uh, a a rain cloud actually appears over it and rains on it, and the fire that was surrounding it uh, goes out. And it takes both of his arms and is going to swing at the two of you again. Um, this time with using like the edges of its, of its hands as like big, uh, morning stars surrounded in these razor sharp, uh, uh, thorns. Does it say feed me Seymour while it's doing No, it, it does roll a 20 though. Not a natch, not a natch 20. Okay. Uh, so the two of you take 18 points of damage. Hachi machi. Okay. Uh, next in the order is Hurley. Hurley takes a step back towards the edge of the platform and hops off of it. What? Uh, but she reappears a couple seconds later, and she's holding in her hand the arcane core from the car that she has popped oh, out goodness. of the engine. And she climbs back on, walks over to you, Taco. And she says, uh, you ready to do some pruning? And throws it and smashes it on the ground. Uh, And there is a bright blue flash of light. And suddenly suspended in the air in front of you, Taco, are these just shiny blue uh, translucent flecks um, that your Umbra staff, kind of like that that one time that it swallowed that guy's staff and became more powerful, your Umbra staff kind of like excitedly like a dog that just smelled a treat uh looks up at these flex and turns inside out and swallows them all up and is now just kind of shaking in your hand and you feel empowered with an energy that you've never really felt before okay (laughs) and it's your turn okay all of your spell slots are back oh great excellent um, Did it also heal all of us and <laughs> give us like plus sixteen to attack? No, the you, the the arcane core just sort of exploded and its arcane contents poured out of it, and uh, we're we're hungrily gobbled up by the Umbra staff. I guess I'm gonna cast Try Zone of Truth. I'm gonna cast a Zone of Truth <laughs> on myself, and then say, you tell the truth forever. <laughs> we're gonna win, and then just by saying that and being true, yeah. right? Yeah, you've been reality. Uh, I mean, I, 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 uh, I think I'm going to need to cast Fireball again. Okay. But I'm going to focus this Fireball on the the same area that uh, Magnus ripped open with his bare hands. Okay. To try to blow a hole open for them. Uh, 14? No, sir. Okay. Not going to do it. Four, five, six... 11, 17, 23, 27, uh, 32. Okay, you uh, you point your Umbra staff. 64. Uh, yeah, you point your Umbra staff at, the, uh, at this towering vine giant, and the fireball starts to come out of the tip of it, but it's, like, really big, and Uh-oh. it's not, it hasn't, like, fully come out of it yet it's almost like a drop of water that hasn't really fallen out of the faucet yet so go ahead and keep rolling those d6s <laughs> okay three nine eleven fifteen eighteen are oh, you telling me when to yeah. stop 22 23 29 
33, 37, 43. This is worrying me. Yeah, 47, 48. Okay, that's good. Okay. So that's 48 on top of the 32? Yeah. Uh, for a total of 160? Yeah. Uh, the sun basically comes out at the end of your Umbra staff. Uh, okay. It's, it, you actually... F- hey, I, I, but did I get to say Yeah, anything? sure. Who's up for some sun-dried dipshit? Uh, that I fire. Okay, yeah. The sun comes out of your Umbra staff. Uh, you actually feel like a blast of heat, uh, like back backdraft come at you as this thing flies at the uh, the big towering vine monster. Uh, With Magnus inside. Yeah, there's kind of a Wicker Man thing going on right now. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be fine. How to get burned. Uh, you actually are fine. <laughs> The uh, the the this this wacky inflatable vine man uh, is just completely consumed by this fire uh, and is is just is completely y- 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 he basically keeps his shape uh, but is now just like gray ash that is quickly whipped away by the the winds of the tornado around you uh, and is now gone and you can see Magnus uh, who looks like shit inside and you see uh a, a still yet undaunted sloan uh who uh laughs and says <laughs> impressive but you are not a jedi yet <laughs> she she starts to regrow vines around her but these look different from the vines that form that towering monster uh these vines are like an inky black uh, with these shining white thorns. And uh, uh, Hurley actually runs up to you, Magnus, and grabs you by the back of the belt and starts to pull you backwards. Um, and, and she says, guys, be careful, be careful, be careful. That's, that's silver point, she says. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a type of plant. It's venom is, is cursed. There, there's no cure. If you get touched by that, there's, there's no surviving that. Stay back. Merle, you've actually heard of, heard of this plant before, and it is infamous for its deadliness. <laughs> Stay away from it. <laughs> Those vines sort of form a bramble around uh, Sloane and uh, sort of encase her. Like a pelt? Like a tomb. Like she, she is... Like a bramble Like pelt. a bramble pelt, yeah. Oh. She is swallowed up in these black vines with these white points. Hurley says... Uh, Guys, I have one last idea. Come over here, she says, and walks over to the edge of the vines. Um, she says, we're going to need a lot. Miraculously unburnt vine platform. Uh, yeah, the vine platform itself is fine. The vine monster is gone. Oh, good. That was a good spell. Yeah, you, you targeted it really well. Um, she beckons you over to the edge of the platform, and she says, we're going um, to need as much distance between her and us if we're going to make this work. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, the three of you... So far, so good. The you walk over to the very edge of the platform, and, and Hurley's smiling now. She's got a really devious idea. She says, uh, okay, Taco, uh, kneel down. Okay. Um, I kneel. Hurley walks over to you and actually throws her arms around you and gives you a big hug. Cool. She picks this moment. <laughs> I'm into um, it. And she whispers, uh, thanks for everything. And backs up. And as she backs up, you see that she's no longer wearing her safety harness. Um, In fact, you are. Uh, And she claps her hands together and points them at the three of you. And you are blasted backwards by a wave of force. And instantly, your safety harness bubbles deploy as you go soaring backwards into the outskirts of the tornado and you see Hurley clap her hands together with determination and she starts to glow with this brilliant white light and she just takes a running leap headfirst into the the black bramble um and that white light that encased her suddenly starts to shimmer throughout the vines Uh, that you guys were standing on and in fact it starts to shimmer throughout the tornado that you're trapped in and it starts to shimmer through the sky above you Uh, and that is the last thing you see before you sort of black out from the g-forces of being in this tornado uh, just floating around in your bubbles wow 
We did. We won. We win. <laughs> Another day saved we by us. We're uh, the best. I never. I didn't think we were gonna fix that one, guys, oh, and then we totally wow. did. We so came we did through. it, and not a life was lost. <laughs> Another chuck- at no cost to ourselves. Another W for the good guys. Yeah. They're gonna change yeah, their tune. Yeah, now. yeah, we're gonna get a plaque for this Woo-hoo! one for sure. Yes. <laughs> when the three of you come to, uh, you landed pretty close to each other, which is um, as unlikely as it is adorable. Uh, <laughs> and you are in a very shallow pool of water, um, and you realize that you have landed in the middle of the Gold Cliff city center. You're surrounded by these tall, shimmering buildings. And uh, y- you, you realize that the, the sky is now just sort of lovely weather. It is, it is, it is returned to normal. Um, and you are sort of sitting in this pool that the rivers that flow into town sort of converge in before they flow out and off the cliff. Um, and uh, uh, about 20 feet away from you in the pool, you see the raven and she's better her skin is not this weird mottled gray that it was when she was in possession uh when she was being possessed by the by the sash um but she's holding in her arms uh hurley who does look bad she she looks really really rough um her her skin is starting to turn uh like pitch black uh, and, and some sort of contagion, some sort of play you can tell is sort of climbing up her veins. Um, and you actually hear the sounds of sirens coming your way from the, uh, from the finish line on the outskirts of town uh, as the Gold Cliff militia starts to rush in to fix this situation. And uh, you hear Hurley um, weakly cough, and she says to Sloan, um, you're in trouble. And Sloan, Sloan laughs and looks up and says, this whole time I, I was looking for something more powerful than this fucking belt. Um, and she looks down at Hurley and she says, I'm, I'm such a fool. And Hurley says, ha ha, yeah. You, don't you have any magics? You're a cleric, for crying out loud. Me? Uh, Sloan looks sadly at you and says, this is, the, the venom of Silverpoint is, there's nothing we can do for her. Horse shit. Well, there's... Horse shit. There's one thing I can do for her, she says. And she leans down to Hurley and whispers. And Hurley says, uh, yeah, I think that'd be all right. And uh, Sloan looks back at the three of you and says, I, I want to thank you for everything you've done, but I, I have one last request for you. She says, are, are there other objects in this world that are as powerful as this belt? Yeah. Yes. Uh-uh. There are fewer. <laughs> she, she says, um, don't let this happen again. And then you are blinded by another flash of light, an explosion of force that sort of uh, throws back some of the water in this pool back on your face. Um, and you're blinded for just a moment, but as your sight returns you realize you're being buffeted by this thick whirlwind of these light pink petals. Um, and, and they settle somewhat, and the winds settle somewhat, uh, and, and thousands of these petals are floating weightlessly through the air. And you can see in the middle of this pond of a beautiful towering cherry blossom tree has appeared. Um, and it's, it's where these petals are just sort of flying off of. And as far as trees go, it's, it's the prettiest one you've ever seen. And at its base, you see these roots and knots that are forming two vaguely humanoid shapes. Uh, one is a sort of a shorter figure lying in the embrace of a taller figure. And on the ground, in the water in front of them, you see a raven mask and a ram's mask. And tucked neatly in between the two of them, you see the Gaia sash. I, I elbow Taco and point at the sash. I elbow uh, Magnus. Okay. I elbow Magnus. I elbow, I elbow Taco a little bit harder and point at the mask. Or point at the belt. Oh, yeah. I notice Magnus reaching for rail splitter and I say, don't even think about it. And then <laughs> 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 
I hear, and I grab the bell. Hey everybody, this is your best friend, your dungeon master, your confidant. You can tell me anything. I can keep a secret. I'm Griffin McElroy. Um, uh, thank you so much for listening to episode 27 of The Adventure Zone, the uh, 10th installment in, and final installment, I should say, in the Pedals to the Metal uh, saga. Uh, boy, this one really stretched out and went a while, uh, but I had no idea how long that race was going to go, but I, I enjoyed doing it, uh, and I, I really hope you enjoyed listening to it. I have a few personal messages to read on this episode. Uh, If you want to get a message out there to a a fellow listener, a loved one, uh, maybe a soon-to-be loved one, I don't don't know what your plans are, Uh, you can hit us up. Go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron, and you can find out how to get on the show. Like this message for Jess from Kenny, who says, Yeah! And that's this. That's the phonetic pronunciation I've decided to give this emoji. Because it's really just an emoji. Jess, Kenny has said to you an emoji, and it's a smiling face with heart-shaped eyes. And to me, I see that, and I read it left to right, and I go, yeah, because I don't know. I guess that's the sound of, of love. Or maybe they're a little bit afraid that their eyes have been replaced with hearts. Anyway, sounds like there's some good love in there. Uh, congratulations, Jess and Kenny, and thanks for listening. Got another message here, and it's for RJ, and it's from Sam, Ryan, and Billy, who say, Happy birthday, RJ. <sighs> We know that it's hard being such an abnormally tall, basic B word in today's rough and tumble world. We hope that the PSL we know you're holding and a message from the McElroys will ease your pain. Love, the brain trust, and Ryan. Ryan, I don't know why you didn't make the cut. It sounds like you got lots of good ideas on on how to spring surprises on your good friend RJ. Um, But uh, you know what? Keep on hoping. Aspirations are what fuel the fire of life. And RJ, happy birthday, man. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the hashtag TheZoneCast. If you use the hashtag TheZoneCast, you might end up as a character on the show. Uh, I think the next episode is going to be another lunar interlude. Going to do a little bit of shopping at the Fantasy Costco. Oh, if you want to send in an item for me to consider adding to the store shelves of the Fantasy Costco, you can hit us up at AdventureZoneCast at gmail.com. Send it in. Make sure it's not, like, way overpowered. And make sure it's not just, like, a silly joke because uh, either of those are not going to be used. I'm looking for neat, practical, uh, humorous in in nature, but not just, like, it's a poop. Um, That type of stuff. And I'll put it on the shelf, and maybe they'll buy it with their hard-earned cash. And if you tweet about the show using the hashtag TheZoneCast, you might end up as a character in the next arc which should start uh, pretty soon. Uh, Hey, do me a favor and do yourself a favor and go listen to the other shows on the Maximum Fun Network. There's a lot of really, really good shows over there. I'm talking about Jordan Jesse Go. I'm talking about Throwing Shade. I'm talking about Pop Rocket. There's tons and tons of great shows. They're all free. We do other shows on the network too, like My Brother, My Brother and Me, a show that me and Justin and Travis do uh, about giving out bad advice and making fun of people on Yahoo Answers. Uh, if you want to come see us, if you live anywhere near Huntington, West Virginia, if you live anywhere in that tri-state area, we're doing a, a holiday show called Candle Nights. It's a pan-religious, pan-sexual, personal pan holiday. That's December 21st. Uh, you can find out more about tickets at bit.ly forward slash Candle Nights 2 because it's our second Candle Nights. Thanks again for listening, and thanks for sticking with us through an abnormally long story arc. It's kind of bonkers that like nearly half of the episodes we put out have been in this in this arc and that we've been working on it for god like five months now that's ridiculous um i'm excited to move on to to something new uh again it's going to have the same characters and everything it's just going to be the next sort of step in the campaign thank you all so much for your support of the show i should say too um it's it's really cool when we can try new stuff and you guys are just all down to clown it really means a lot and it makes it a fun space to explore the depths of our creativity and our depravity. I'm rambling, and I have nothing else to talk about, so let's get back to the episode. Uh, The next one will be up uh, on December 3rd. Oh, we're not going to see you again before Thanksgiving. Have a happy Thanksgiving from from our table to yours. Pass the the pudding, won't you? Okay, this is the end. Uh, 
as you walk forward towards the belt, you hear a voice in your mind say, Wizard, wizard, wouldn't you like to be more powerful than you are now? Wouldn't you like unceasing, undeniable power over nature? You could cast big lightning balls and control trees and vines <laughs> and shit. You know this is Taco, right? <laughs> Hell yeah, I mean, I'm listening. Why'd you stop? <laughs> what else you got? Grab me and put me on, why don't you? Hey, listen, Belt, I love everything you're laying down, Bubula, but I can't put you on. I gotta put you in my bag. Okay. What's too small? Uh, go ahead and make a... We're gonna do a wisdom contest. Oh, gosh. Not my strong suit. It's probably better than mine. Got a nine. Yeah, listen, I can't lie on this one, dudes. It's a critical failure. <laughs> uh, yeah, you reach down and grab the belt, and uh, you stretch its two ends out. Just as you're about to clasp it around your body, you hear a voice say, No, don't do it, Taco. Hang in there. You're tougher than this. And, and you hear it. And, and you it's hear, Jiminy Cricket. And you hear another voice go, uh, yeah, trust me, man. You don't want to put that thing on. The The voice is giving you advantage on that roll. That's a three, my dude. <laughs> Sorry. I rolled a 22 to punch him in the head. Uh, okay, he punches me and then have him... Uh, my, 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 and I uh, grab the sash. And Merle grabs the sash. I rolled uh, a 19 plus a three modifier. Okay. There. Thank okay. God. So, 22. Now, to be fair, Taco does take five points of damage <laughs> for the head punch. Okay. Noted. Uh... Okay, yeah, so Merle, you hear, uh, oh, okay, you, nature, Claire, why should I come to you first? Come on, man, put <laughs> me on. Nobody ever thinks of Merle. I, there's no plant, there's no vine you'll never be able to not fuck, they say. <laughs> I'll give you sexual conquest over anything. What do you want, a fucking onion? Uh, but you have beaten this thing in a, a test of wisdom. I don't need your help, pal. Fucking an onion? <laughs> To have sex I can with fuck onion. any onion I want. <laughs> I get all the bulbs I can handle, Bermuda, man. <laughs> red, uh, it doesn't yeah. matter. You, onion rings, they're mine. You, you, <laughs> you open the door, I walk through it. After, after the weirdest, after executing the weirdest brag ever, you put uh, the Gaia sash safely into your belt. Uh, into your no not in your belt fuck fanny pack it's in, my fanny pack. you lower it into your fanny pack and and give it an authoritative zip you hear sloan and hurley's voice in your head go well that was not what i expected really but i guess through the power of teamwork the two of you triumphed um i helped taco up okay you thanks. helped taco up thanks pal now you're merle i'm glad you helped him up so i didn't have to uh we're the worst. The Gold Cliff Militia have surrounded the pool that you guys are standing in. A few concerned members of the militia hop out of their wagons and draw their weapons. They pull these clubs and, and crossbows out. Um, uh, but another battle wagon pulls up and kicks up some dust as it does a brake slide to the edge of the pool. And uh, Captain Bain does an elegant leap out of the car and runs over to the three of you and says, Boys, don't worry, I got this one. These three are with me. And he grabs you and puts you into his paddy wagon and says, uh, come on, I'll get you guys to safety and, and drives away from this scene. Um, and he takes you back to his his office in the uh, his, his private office in the Gold Cliff Militia headquarters and is uh, is sort of debriefing with you. And he asks, um, guys, I got to ask what happened out there. Nothing like uh, out where yeah, you're Listen, there's like seven episodes of stuff, man. <laughs> I guess. Wait. Oh, then the, then we crossfade into the sound of an airplane propeller yeah, right, as we tell yeah, them the whole right. story. Uh, I, I guess just for starters, what happened to Lieutenant Hurley? Uh, tree she got limbed, man. What does that even mean? I, I, she I she's a tree. She's a tree now. Yeah, but we're okay. We're okay. We're fine. We're great. Did you secure the grand relic? Uh, yes. Yeah. It was yeah. it was touch and go for a second. And we we have a long list of expenses that I guess we could like to just forward that yeah, to you. Receipts? Yeah. You do we or... need to give our receipts to you? No, I imagine like... the director will probably want those. We'll pass them off to I don't know the bursar or whatever. I sort of yeah, play by my own cool. rules vis-a-vis -vis expense reports. I hope Deborah's back from vacation because Raul takes forever. 
Yeah. Oh, oh God. Yes. With the birthday parties. Oh, of course, with the birthday parties. Everybody got to gather around. It's Friday. It's 3 p.m. I want to go home. I got to ask you guys something. You, you've recovered three of these things now. Mm-hmm. How do you, yeah? How do you manage to like resist the the thrall of them? You know, oh, we're pretty dumb. We are dense. Dumb as a box of rocks. He uh, he looks at the three of you. Doesn't quite believe you, but he says, uh, "That's interesting. That's interesting." Well, he reaches uh, underneath his desk and he pulls out a decanter with this uh, thick brown beverage inside of it and pours himself and the three of you a glass of it. And he holds up his glass and he says, uh, a toast to Lieutenant Hurley. She was the bravest, the bravest officer I ever worked with in this force. I'm getting too old for this shit. Yes. I hope her memory never leaves you. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, nice. Oh, that got right to the root of the problem. Uh, It was a a tremendous joke, if I do say so myself. Bark. Bark. Uh, there's he, a dog in here. He is. Uh, he's looking at the three of you, sort of expectantly, and he looks kind of nervous as he's holding this drink up. Uh, a, to- a toast, then. Have you guys ever toasted before? Marshmallows. I like toast. No, a to- it's bad luck if you don't drink after the toast. He says. Uh, um, I'm not really thirsty, old buddy. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, um, this is a. This is a thirty-year. Brandy wine. Magnus, this, kill him. This kill is him, Magnus. Really, kill this him right is now. really rare stuff. Just fucking drink it. I cast charm person on him. Okay. <laughs> he has to uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, he rolls a nineteen. Fuck. Wow. Yeah, he resists your charm spell, but you almost feel like your charm spell was overpowered. By another spell, um, an, another mind control spell, as mm. and 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 Captain Bane starts to glow red, like there, he has a faint red outline around him. As Yo, he, Bane, my dude, what's a, up? As he quietly stands up and he he taco, he takes your glass and smashes it to the ground, and Merle, he takes your glass and he smashes it to the ground. And then he takes Magnus's glass and just chugs it. And then suddenly his skin starts to turn that sort of sickly black color that uh, Hurley's was after she dove into the, the silver point vines. And he falls to the ground dead. Oh, bummer. Well, she- and as he, as he falls, you see a figure standing behind him. Um. Uh, right, it's it's actually not standing. It's kind of floating, and it's human sized and human shaped, but you can't really make out its its race definitively because all you can see is a bright red robe. If, if there's punch a, it. if there's a person in that, you, as as okay, you reach up to punch the the red robe, and your fist just passes through it. It is punch it, again. <laughs> you punch again. It is and again. You punch it furiously. It is incorporeal. Um, oh, then I used rail splitter on it. Okay. You, well, that did it. You cut it in it's half. It's not in no. arboreal. It's incorporeal. Oh, that's a good joke. Thank you. Your axe, your axe passes clean through it. Um, you're, you're lucky you didn't get a, get a hunk of one of your buddies with that with that swing. Um, you can't see inside this this floating red robe. Uh, all you can see is just complete pitch blackness and a single small white light that illuminates as this this red robe begins to speak and it asks are you afraid what Hmm? yeah i think he's talking to you taco what did you i couldn't what did you say are you afraid of the dark i'm still not i'm still (laughs) like in general or he doesn't say are you afraid more of goosebumps man myself (laughs) uh his his whispers are actually filling the room they're 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 really loud Cool. Are you afraid? No. I mean, sometimes. Yeah. I think we all are. You know, it's you natural. get lonely and you're like, what if I never meet the right person? And oh, there's a lot to worry about. You know what I mean? It says, uh. You do not know how to be afraid. 
Well, probably not. Oh. If it's a smartness thing, no, uh uh-uh. It it extends a a sleeve of its robe and displays... And hands you being afraid for dummies. (laughs) (laughs) This is how to be afraid. Uh, No, he he actually kind of uh, projects this almost holographic representation of a series of familiar faces. And uh, it says... uh, and as it says these names, their their faces sort of appear in the palm of its hand. And it says, uh, This is the true nature of man. The want, the hunger. It consumes everything it touches. It can't be stopped or changed. It's the end of everything. And then it says, This is your first lesson. And disappears in a spout of flame. I didn't get any of that. It was really spooky, though. It was a little spooky. When he was asking if I was afraid, I was like, yeah, Ooh, I'm pretty, yeah. pretty afraid well, right now. Yeah, I, I wasn't mean, like, for a second, yeah, I, definitely was, a, I didn't know what was going on. Afraid, I'm a little afraid now, but he's gone. I, yeah, you know, I thought it was yeah, pretty good. Love the Santa robe. Oh, boy. He looked great. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a good red. Oh, well, it looked like a rich fabric. I tried to punch it. Did you see that? Nothing happened. That's cool crazy, man. That would be really cool to have. Yeah, right? But we're all right. And now we've got this cool office. Yahoo! <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I think, I think, I, uh, if I was getting the right message from that, I think mm-hmm. we're going to need to turn our attention to one very important question. Do you think there was any prize money for the race? No, or is that so, something I need yeah. to Probably. check back in on? Or? Sure. Actually sitting on Captain Bane's desk. Uh, you see a briefcase. Uh, you actually see two briefcases, and uh, one is bigger than the other. And uh, 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 imprinted on the top of it is the number one, and then the smaller briefcase imprinted <laughs> on that is the number two. I grab number two. I grab number one. Yeah, you crack them open, uh, and inside of number one is 3,000 gold pieces. <laughs> Hell yeah. So split evenly. And That's then inside of number piece. two uh, is 1,500 gold pieces. <laughs> Oh yeah! Pretty good. We'll we'll just split it three ways. Fifteen hundred, yeah. and I I search Captain Bane. Fifteen hundred a piece. That seems fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, Captain Bane uh, doesn't have anything on him except for his badge, and I think uh, his badge. Okay. He also has a small black vial. I take the vial. Uh, okay, you take the vial, and written on the the vial, uh, in scrawled almost childish letters, uh, is the word Silver Point. Oh yeah, I figured that bastard. What a monster. I grabbed the bottle of hooch. Yeah, okay. Well, it's very poisoned, but that's your prerogative. I guess it'd be a fun prank. Just write it down. Yeah. <laughs> write it down. You may need it sometime. Bottle of hooch. There's a stapler Poison in here. Hooch. Anybody want the fucking stapler? Are we done yes, yet? Yes, I grabbed the stapler of power. No, it's just a stapler, dude. Uh, yeah, that's all the story I got for you. This is too meta. So if this you would really like to hear good. season four, just go to Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, search for it. Go to kickstarter.patreon. <laughs> Throw us some money. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Let's be honest. We live in a world with too much media. You need a podcast on the front lines figuring out what's great. We're here for you. We're Pop Rocket. I am Guy Branham. I'm a comedian. I'm Winter Mitchell. I call myself a digital strategist. <laughs> I'm Oliver Wang, academic and disc junkie. Margaret Wappler, je suis as journaliste. <laughs> and we watch, listen to, and read everything so that you don't have to. And then we tell you about all the things that you'll love to love. Find us in iTunes or wherever you download podcasts. Pop Rocket. Every Wednesday from Maximum Fun. 